call meeting to order. Waitley Select Board, uh, August 21st, 2019. First item is review minutes, review and vote minutes of the meeting of July 31st. Motion. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Yep. Okay. You pass vendor and awards. Yep. So now since the board voted last time to authorize the chairperson in in his or her absence, the vice chairperson to sign warrants, the law says that we need to make these summaries of the warrants available at the uh, at the next select board meeting. So um, this should be a standing item and if, this would be the time that if anybody has any questions about items on the warrant that have been signed, this would be the time to do it. Um, and if not, then I think we could move forward, but that would meet the requirements of the law if we sort of keep this standing item. Do we have to have these in here? Do yes. Have meetings? <clears throat> yep, they need to be available. Okay. So any comments on that? Jonathan, are you okay with I'm you? More for the public, I think, but. Well. But I know, thank you, I have no Members and payroll yeah. warrants. Thank you. As long as everyone got paid. Yeah, and we did too, so. We did? That's, that's one good. of the good. questions will come when that check's not there, right? Yeah, right, your wife will be asking. <laughs> okay, uh, next item is comments from the public on items not listed in the agenda. Anybody? I have to inspect our chair. Any other any comments they want to make? Uh, that it's not on your agenda. I have no comments. No. I have questions, but I don't want to prolong this any more than it has to be. Thank you. So I'll hold my questions until some other time. Okay. Uh, moving on to scheduled appointments. First one is is Paul Newland of Watermelon Wednesdays to request a waiver from the user fee for the Whaley Town Hall for prior and future events. Okay. Paul, do you want to yeah, present I, your case? I, I realize according to the stipulations and the use of the Town Hall that there is a, that nonprofits and residents are permitted to use the Town Hall without having to pay the user fee. <clears throat> I'm a resident and Watermelon Wednesdays is a nonprofit. However, we do charge admission, and I believe it says that if you charge admission, you're a money-making operation and you have to pay the user fee. But I would like to suggest, since I'm not a really a money-making operation, um, that I be allowed to waive those fees, and in, in exchange for that privilege, um, I would be willing to allow users of the town hall, future users, to uh, avail themselves of my sound system, which I have, I store in the town hall. It's about a $4,000 system. And that it has a sound board and three monitors and the necessary equipment to run <clears throat> a good sound system. Without it, if you have any sort of, uh, any sort of, uh, performance or meeting that requires music, you're, uh, you're not in good shape. And it really does help to have a good sound system. What you do have there is microphones that can wirelessly or by cable um, go into the uh, PA system they have, but it's not really for uh, musical performance or theatrical performance. So. I think the town could benefit by having my equipment there. I'd want to be asked if somebody wanted to use it, and I'd have to make sure they knew how to use it. Um, and that would be fine with me, and it'd be a benefit <coughs> for the town. So that's my sort of quid pro quo proposal. Um, okay, and then I see it in the back in here, uh, Jonathan, we have a Comments from Neil talking about the audio visual or the audio equipment here. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I, I, I'd like to try to figure out how to find a compromise. Um, That's what I'm trying to do. I, I have never cared whether an organization is a for-profit or a not-profit, not-for-profit. When it comes to town hall usage, um, there are a lot of not-for-profits that have a tremendous amount of money. So it, it, IRS, oh, yeah, IRS tax status, you know, it, it's just not that relevant to me. That being said, well, we're an educational nonprofit. Yeah, I mean, you know, Harvard University is a nonprofit. Bay State Medical is a nonprofit. You know, AARP is a nonprofit. Um, if I, I were that big, I'd be happy. No, I get that. I get that. What, what I, I guess. What I would like to propose, Paul, because I am sympathetic to what you're saying, um, but I, I also am cognizant of, 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 of precedent, <clears throat> is that y you're just charged for the usage of the auditorium during event hours. Which is what we are. Well, no, you're charged auditorium. Uh, to my knowledge, you're charged auditorium prior to and at time of. Am I wrong? Is, it's one it's hundred fifty dollars for up to four hours of usage, right? That's what the that's what the policy says. In each four hour block is another one fifty. Right. So it's one fifty plus one fifty and then the use of the meeting room, because they use both right. the auditorium right. and the downstairs meeting room. So that would be a total of three seventy five. Right. I believe is what for for two blocks of four hours. And the meeting room. Yeah. Which would be two blocks for the meeting room. Well, the meeting room's only used, we don't use it beforehand. Right. Yeah, right, so it's two blocks for the for the auditorium and then one block for the meeting room. Right. And and so that's a total of, of 375. Okay. Yeah, um, I would like to propose that the fee just be for, <clears throat> uh, for the four hour block of time used and time when they're audience, when they're uh, when they're in there. that that four hour period of time you know that four hour block rather than a seven hour block well how, uh, explain how do you how do we get to the, the two hour block the two blocks i mean the, the eight hours well I, 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 I need to set up the sound equipment that takes an hour or two okay but the concert goes from 7 30 to 9 30 or quarter to 10. we okay, let so people in around 7 15. So and it goes to around 9.30 or quarter of 10. To 10, so that's... Less than four that's hours. That's three or four hours, okay. But how have we done other events when people wanted to come in and set up earlier than the, the show? Have we, <coughs> have we counted that set up time as part of their hours here, four hours? I don't know that we've <coughs> had anybody other than... Just the library. Just the library doing... Library concerts. Yeah, and we just let Cindy do it, do what she needs to do. Well, you had a show where people were selling things. Oh, like the vendor craft, the craft yeah, fair. Yeah, the craft fair. Yeah, the craft fair. Where do they do then? But that's a lot of setup. Um, of course, there was no. Did we no charge anything? Charged. There was no. Look. There was no fee to. They weren't charging admission, I guess. So I don't know if we did. We charge anything? No. Probably not. Okay. Although they were charging customers, just like I charge customers for what they sold. Yeah. 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 And I sold music, and the customers consumed it. But but our our policy on, on user fee. Okay. I mean, make two points. One is okay. It just says for charging a fee. It doesn't it doesn't mention. Uh, uh, I use the words for profit. Uh, non profit organization, but uh, what was that? You, used, you said something else. You're a non profit and also you're not a money maker. Well, I guess the money maker isn't the question or isn't, isn't, isn't identified as a concern in our user fee. Whether you make money or not, doesn't matter to us or whether you charge money or not uh, or how much money you charge it, it doesn't matter to us either maybe the question is how do we define the four-hour use period 
whether it's the time the event is actually held or to set up and, and uh, take down at the end of the event. And I, I guess if we're gonna define it for, for your events, I, I guess your activities, we probably should do the same for other people that wanna use it that way. Well, yeah, I certainly think that if, if, if we change this to the extent Paul's asking for or, or somewhere in between or not, I mean, anything changed shouldn't be changed just for one entity. We need to be consistent right. across across the board. Right. Um, and again, I, you know, if, if, if you've got, if, if we were just to charge for that four hour block when the con, you know, the four hour block, you're only performing for two and a half, but you get my point. Um, if you have 80 people in the room, which I gotta believe your numbers are pretty similar to the numbers you have up at the chapel. No, they're about twice. Okay, they're, okay. So it's a, it's a buck a person. If, it, if it's a $150 user fee. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just, you know, and, and I appreciate the offer about the, the sound system, but you know, I know if I were to go and use the sound system, I wouldn't want to use it because I'd be afraid that something would happen to it and then it's on me. And, and that's, that gives me angst. Um, so I, I guess I'm totally comfortable not charging for the time it takes to set up. And the analogy that I would use is, let's say that the Williamstown Theater wanted to do a road show and come here for three days of our town. And they wanted to do it at Town Hall. We wouldn't, and they obviously would be taking up the auditorium for three days. They wouldn't be breaking down and setting back up. We wouldn't charge them for three days of usage. Four hour blocks. Right, we'd charge them probably for, and we'd come, you know, if they were doing that, we'd come to some, some unique situation probably, but it would be in the area of when are you having a performance? We don't want to discourage the performance. We don't want to offer it for, 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 for nothing. Um, and I, so I just think the user fee just for that four hour block is, is a very fair thing in, in my mind. So and again, it's a dollar or two per ticket. That, that's, that's, that's me. I guess I, I kind of feel the same way, Jonathan, I think, for the, for the four-hour period. Yeah, if we just charge you for the four-hour period, $150, I guess I don't consider that as being unreasonable. And it doesn't alter our policy for anybody else that wants to come and use it. Oh, oh but I think it should. I think, I think if, if, if we're going to well, change this, we're not going to make an exception. I, I, and I also don't think we should charge for the meeting room because you know, it, it, it's 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 sort of like no one's going to use the meeting room during the event anyway. An al an, an alternative organization have you know don't charge for the meeting room. Just the auditorium. That's where the performance is taking place. That, I, I just okay, but you do have. Some, let me ask, what do you do with the meeting room? What's in the meeting room? The artists keep their equipment there. Their instruments. Right. Just during they the take a break. Or? They okay. take a break at intermission, yeah. and they use that to change in. So they use it for about half an hour. I wouldn't charge. I don't want to charge for that. But if the auditorium, I mean, I want to charge for the meeting when nothing else is being used. But if the auditorium is being used, um, you kind of have to use the meeting room too for the very purposes that, that you're pointing. Right. Out. There's no place for performers or whatnot to change or make up or right. You know, store their Right, and then it makes it an unusable facility. That's kind of right, right. So that's that's what I would like to to, to propose, Paul. I, again, I'm sympathetic to, to to what you're saying, but um, okay. Does anybody else, anybody here, have any comments on that? Well, um, just um, from the finance perspective, I don't know what that means in terms of. Um, difference in revenue 
from the town hall. As you could remember, the town hall was, was not and um, was not a landslide vote by any chance, by any means, in terms of the entire uh, population of the town. And I think one of the um, one of the salient points during that time was the fact that we were in fact going to try to use the town hall as a revenue producer. So, you know, changing look, watermelon Wednesdays from a cultural perspective is a boom to, to the town. It always has been. Paul runs a clean show, um, and it's never any problems. Um, so I think what we can, I think this meeting of the minds here is, you know, from a finance perspective, good for both sides. Um, Paul, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're a nonprofit. Well, to um, start with, you know, so you can you can you know d disperse those costs and then never see them really what do you mean disperse the cost well based on the ticket prices if you have a if you have a cost to your operation sure then you can you know charge more for entry fees then you balance that out so that well I have to add don't show a profit okay what are your entry fees? What, what or what range do you have for entries? Not, not entry. Not it varies. Fees. Twenty-five, what? thirty bucks. Okay, I take it. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that. I think that's reasonable about the community room. Uh, I could use that as a compromise. That would help. Every little bit helps. I'm not a high margin outfit. I, I pay myself about two grand a year to put on 12 concerts. And that's, uh, that's our only payout to people. Because I'm the people. It's a one person. <coughs> Claudia helps a lot. But it's a one person show. So oh, I also, I have an agreement with the Waitley Inn. And um, Chip is very happy to have concerts over there, of course, because people come before the show, they eat meals there, they go afterwards, uh, maybe for a drink if the bar is open. And so it's, it's a, you know, it's good for local business. Right. Okay, so I, what, I, what I hear would be proposed is that if auditorium is rented, that uh, there should be no charge for the meeting room, and we should just limit uh, the charges for the auditorium to the $150, regardless of the, to the time of performance happening in the in the room. Or time right. of performance happening. So so right. So in just so so that we're clear. Hypothetical, Paul. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden Watermelon Wednesdays decided that we're going to do Seed Saturdays. And you wanted to do a matinee and an evening performance, then we would charge sure, the total the hours of performance. Right, exactly. Four hour, four hour, four right. hour. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And I don't encourage you to use seat Saturdays this year. It's it your, was, it's your thing. It was all I could come it's up with at thing. the time. You know. You know you get copyright. Okay, so Brian, is this something that? That we should change the right up here and vote on it as amending these uh, user fees. How, how should we handle this? I think we really should. I think we need to asterisk or some or denote it somehow so that it's very clear. Because if we're, if, you know, to to to, to Paul's point, yeah. it, it, this is on our shoulders to sort of market this as a cultural and revenue quasi revenue generating <laughs> facility. Um, and if we're not clear about fees, well, then we're not a very good business here. Okay. Okay. So, so I guess this should be rewritten and presented to the board at the next meeting. Yeah, I think what would be good because Paul, you're seeking this retroactive for what was the, the previous one on April twentieth, or actually the last one, which was July thirty first. Oh, we didn't. We can deal with that. Okay. Yeah, the April 20th. 
But I think the uh, the wording on the specification should be clear also that I, I forget how it's phrased, but if the entity, regardless of its status, is charging admission, then it can't waive the fee, right? As long as there's a fee charged for admission, there must be a... And that was... Does it if a fee is charged to attend the event, then the user shall pay the rate for it. Yeah. Okay. Great. And again, so I for instance, the library had a craft show. There was no fee to attend the event. There were fees charged to buy product being sold at the event for a profit. So that was confusing to me. That's all I'm saying. And that's just, maybe that's an oddball, but. Maybe we should clarify, should we clarify that? I think, I think we treated the library, well, the library, I think we treated that, that craft fair as, as an event for the library. And my, or and put on by the library. So it's a town department. It's a town department. There's going right. to be no fee to use a town building. Well, I can just um, you might want to consider along the same lines while we're in the discussion. Should Watermelon Wednesday go for in the future do something that was of direct benefit to the town, some kind of fundraiser of some sort? that you might want to think about waiving that fee entirely if, in fact, the revenues generated by the concert were coming back to the town. And, and I, to that some way, I, I, think, I think Paul or anybody would probably do that by definition, say, you know what, if we're going to do this, or if I'm doing a fundraiser for I don't care what, but especially for the town to raise money for a new playground, you know, whatever then I think that, that Paul or somebody would come and say, hey, we're doing this, Let, we're, let's put together a strategic, strategic partnership. Well, you know, we, we, we have that option in here already. We already have that, yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah, okay. We can always wave if, yeah. Well, I have a fundraiser actually scheduled for the 27th of October, but it's for raising money for Watermelon Wednesdays. There's no fee charge to attend the event, but donations will be accepted. So. There's a little gray area there you might want to consider. Yeah, I would have to think about that. I, I, I think what Paul was saying was, you know, for the town, and I yeah, was sure. more like, you know, the Jimmy Fund. Yeah, of course. But yeah, um, uh, it strikes me that all, get, all proceeds always, Oh, because you're not going to charge them. Well, like, like you're saying, though, when, you, when you're raising money for a charity, the charity could be the Cooley Dickinson Hospital. It's a nonprofit. But, you know, like you said, they're big. They got a lot of money now. So it's a gray area. It's yeah. a gray area. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm hoping this uh, also stimulates a little more clarity. Well, I think some of these instances we may have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis, I think. I don't think you can write the policy that, that detail, I guess, include all these conditions. Well, and that's why we wrote it the way we did, yeah. so that we would have flexibility with, with, with the policy to some, to some extent. Right. Um, okay, okay, so Brian, you'll, you'll uh, rewrite this section of the policy? Um, you're clear on? Well, yeah, let's get a little clarity. So, so for the April 20th concert, which you've been holding off on, on, on paying a fee, we're saying that's going to be 150, correct? Yeah. And then for future, for future nonprofit concerts where a fee is charged. Again, I could care less about the tax debts. I, I really struggle with that, but. Okay. So for future concerts where a fee is charged. We charge for that four hour block of performance. Right. Where the performance sits on it. Okay. Because the way the policy is written, it's one hundred fifty dollars for up to four hours, so it's not prorated. If it, if it's three hour, if it's two hours, we'll do to make it easy. If it's two hours, it's, we're not charging seventy five. No, we're charging one hundred fifty dollars for the right. four hour yeah. block. Okay. So you might want to okay. strike the nonprofit thing altogether. I, I, I personally, I do, but I'm not king, so. Well, <laughs> I'm just you. suggesting yeah. that would be, and that would help clarify. Yeah. I just, it doesn't make a difference. But you have the Waitley resident also now, Waitley resident. Yeah. You know. 
right? I mean, I, I, I think about, I, I, you know, I think about, about Harold Heath Field. We charge for adult baseball. I, the people who, who do it are not Whitley residents, but all of a sudden, if, if they found a Whitley resident to make that request, now that's not our policy at, at Hurley Heath, but for, for, for consistency, that would be a big hit to our revenue stream because they pay a lot of money to Do they charge admission to the We game? charge, no, they don't, but they, they're using the facility. Right. Sure. Okay, so. Many, 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 many times a year. Yeah. yeah. Are you clear, Brian, what needs to be? Yep, I think, I think we're good for, for the fees going forward. And let me take a look at this and, and think about what, what could be changed. Okay, and, and the other thing, as long as we're making changes, is the liability insurance, you know, we're, we were also look at that too. talking about the, the umbrella policy for liability. Yeah, we did, we did a little more research on that and found it was yeah. difficult, right? Yeah, it's not expensive to do that, yeah. Umbrella, yeah. Liability for one event is one time is like 150. But if you go for five bucks. Yeah. Right. But, if you, but if you go for an umbrella policy, it jumps up to 500. If you can get one that way, most. Yeah. Well, the insurance company I talked to didn't. Very, very few people apply for it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's what so. that's what Amy was hearing from people as well yeah. about the, the insurance part of it. Let me prolong this for a question from the finance side. Is there any life? I realize it's his equipment that's in the town hall. I would imagine it's relatively expensive equipment. I'm just throwing it out there. Is there any liability on the part of the town should something happen to the equipment? Or is it all pretty much your insurance policy? That's an interesting question. Uh, <coughs> It is. My guess is it would be on his shoulders, sort of like, I remember back in the day when you had um, removable car radios. Yep. If that car radio was stolen out of your car and it was removable, insurance didn't cover it because they thought, they said, you were expected to pull that out of the car. It may be, not a perfect analogy, but it may be a, a, an okay analogy. It may be a question you want to answer because you'd hate to have an argument about this. Well, if, if he doesn't he, have equipment yeah. and they're not paying, or he's not going to, you know, that, that could be. A well, problem. I can remove the equipment and just use, bring it back every time I have a concert there. It's yeah. a lot of schlepping. It's heavy it's equipment. But well, yeah. that, or the or the other option is to donate the equipment to the town, and that would be our responsibility. You know, we, we would. Uh, oh, we wouldn't charge you to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, don't job, I, I don't think that's a good idea. That, that, <laughs> that gives me the. I mean, I guess that's. I'm, I'm happy to store it for Paul. Oh, okay. For anybody, not just because it's Paul. In your house? That being said, I don't want to be Bible if something were to happen either. Sure. Okay. Well, it's, un, it's locked. So nobody can use it unless they get the key. Right, but could they. Oh, you mean the closet's locked? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but the, the audio equipment that, that's there was was purchased by the what, historical commission, the friends of town friends hall. of town hall. Of but town it hall. is it is was donated to the town, right? Correct, yeah. So it is town property. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. I think I'm clear. Do so we need a motion or no? We're good. I think it would be good to do a motion. Right, I'll make a motion to do whatever we just said. <laughs> okay. Second. <laughs> Okay, boys, well, I've got a birthday down. party to go to. Okay. All right, my son. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, moving on. Uh, next scheduled appointment is uh, Jim Savine, uh, Chief of Police, to request establishment and funding of a revolving account to pay police detail on a timely basis. Yes. Jim? Um, I can be as short and brief as you'd like. I don't think we need to drag it on. I gave you a proposal uh, just to give you a quick overview of it. Um, this issue has come up in the past. Um, the last time, I think it was about seven years ago, the last time the select board made a decision, and that's when we decided to add a $10 late charge um, for details that were past 30 days. So the vendor went past 30 days to pay for the detail. Um, since then, I 
could probably count on one hand how many times somebody's actually paid a late fee. But they just don't pay it. It's not. It's not in their. It's not in their budget. We're not chasing people down for the ten dollar late fee. Sometimes it's sixty days, ninety days. So the late fee hasn't worked. Just flat out hasn't worked. Um, so I've got some numbers. I've included the numbers in the in the proposal there, but I can just go over quickly just as far as. Um, talking about detailed pays, when an officer does a detail, so he works for a vendor, say, uh, Eversource, does a detail today from eight o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon, he has to wait for that vendor, Eversource, to pay the bill that we submit. Um, so I did the last three years because it was very time consuming and it's not one of the figures that we, we worked in. Um, we've been keeping track since 2012 of, uh, of numbers. This is just one that we haven't uh, kept track of was the, the average number of days per year that um, it takes to pay for a detail. So I did 2019, 18, and 17. And this year, um, there's a couple of big projects that, that were going on in other towns um, that officers went to and those vendors were paying fairly quickly, sometimes within two, three weeks. Um, so we're looking at about 36 days for this year on average um, for, for a detail officer to get paid for, for working that detail. 2018, um, this is, these are more realistic numbers. 2018 was on average 50 days um, to pay and 2017 was 52 days. So if we kept going back, you'd probably see something similar to that 50, between 50 and 60 day mark. To, and that's 50 to, to 60 days from date of invoice from, or from date of service rendered? Uh, from date of the detail, the date that they worked. So okay, okay. But, and these are these are paid by the town that they have the detail in. All, all these details aren't. They're paid by the vendor. Paid by the by the vendor direct to the officer. No, to the town. To the town. So so when the officer does a detail, we submit a we submit an invoice to the vendor. The vendor yeah. sends us a check. We don't pay the officer until that check comes in. And that's what I'm telling you is taking between 50 and 60 days on average for that check to come in. So the officer works the detail today. He's not going to see a check for, for two months. He's not going to get paid for two months for, yeah. for doing that work. So, and it doesn't matter if he's doing it in Deerfield, it's still the same. Correct. We still have to wait for the check to come in. Check yep. that comes to, to us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking to do is to set up a, a revolving account that we can pay the officers. And when the detail check comes in after 50, 60 days, whatever it might be, we just put that money back into the, that revolving account so the, the money's always there and the officer can get paid within their next pay period, which... The problem is what happens if the check never comes in? So since 2000, and that's what I have records back to since 2000, we've had $1,500 total in the last 19 years, $1,500 that hasn't come in. Um, just in the last seven years, we brought in almost $23,000 in administrative fees. So it, those officers still haven't been paid for that, that $1,500 worth of time. They still haven't been paid for it. But if we had a revolving account, those administrative fees could absorb something like that. So we've had four details in the course of 20 years that, that we haven't gotten, the officer hasn't gotten paid for. See, but I, having spent many, many, many years as a consultant, Working in detail is nothing more or less than being a consultant. And when you're a consultant, you're on another pay schedule than a typical salary pay schedule. And it's just the it's the it's the price you pay for deciding to be a consultant. Um, I'm not sure the town should be on the hook for any of that ever. And I guess my other question is... And the town wouldn't be on the hook for Well, $1,500. Yeah. But we've taken in $23,000 well, that... Okay, but that, but that administrative... Wouldn't have gotten there if they didn't a, do the detail. For a reason. I, I guess... I, two points, I guess. I, I'd be curious how quickly you're getting invoices out to the vendor because... We do them on Fridays. Well, but, but I guess my point is, yeah. is that... Is that that's why I asked the question before, is it from date of invoice or from date of service rendered? Because it, they can't be, a vendor can't be blamed for any time up until they actually receive yeah. the invoice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
and then the other the only the thought I had, and I don't know how to do this administratively. There's obviously a time lag between when we get the check and then that's when it goes to the, to our payroll warrant. So I don't know if there's some way to at least shorten that time period. So we're waiting for a vendor yeah. to pay. And, and let's say the vendor uses 30 days just because that's mm -hmm. what they can do. Yeah. And that check comes in the day after the warrant is signed for the next pay period. Mm -hmm. That means that that officer needs to wait an, another two weeks. So if there was some way to merge that so that we can get a check out somehow, and it, it, it may not be possible, but... It is possible with a revolving account. Well, no, because the revolving accounts still go out the same pay period. They, they have to wait for a pay period. Yeah, but we're not waiting for the check to come in. So if an officer does a detail today, he's getting right. paid in his next but paycheck. He never, he never, Just my, like if he does a shift today, he's getting paid in his next paycheck. And my challenge with that paycheck. is that then the onus really is on the town to be a collection agency. In, the, in 20 years, the town's never collected one detail. But, but I've, I've done it. Yeah, but I've, I've done it for right, but, the last but 19 again, years. I, I just, I'm struggling with the, with the town. We charge the administrative fee for a reason. And I don't think the town should be risking, and it's a degree of risk, obviously, their money for a detail that didn't necessarily directly benefit the town. I, I just... Just a quick question. What's your normal protocol with other towns? Do they have a revolving account? Every town around us has one, yeah. I, I included it on the list. Yeah. Um, Williamsburg is currently working on it. Uh, Ashfield had it. They had an accounting. I don't know all the details behind it, but they had an accounting issue um, between the police department and the town accountant. So there was some mix up. Details didn't get paid. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but they're in the process of, of restoring that or looking at restoring that. Um, but every other town around us, any town that one of our officers would go to for a detail, they, they have a revolving account. So those towns have them. So. You mentioned there was a late fee if they don't pay what, within what, so how many days? 30 days. 30 days? It's okay. a $10 late fee. Have you thought of increasing that late fee and would that make a difference? No. They weren't paying? They were, they're not going to pay it. If, if Mass DOT, if I send Mass DOT, because sometimes for, for a bridge inspection, they'll take six months before they pay for that, for that detail. If I send them a, a $60 late fee check, they're not going to pay it because it wasn't part of the, the budget. They're, not, they're just not going to pay it, just like they're not going to pay for an administrative fee if they're working on their roads. Yeah, so they're, they're not going to pay it. How much money are you proposing for a uh, Right now, 20000 I have outstanding. We have right around, I know we've got a couple more details that came in for this week, um, so we're probably looking at close to $12,000, um, $13,000 outstanding in details right now um, that officers haven't been paid for. And like I said, these are, these are the average numbers, the, the 50 days. Sometimes there's some companies that, that'll pay in three weeks, and there's some companies that take six months, eight months to, to pay. So I just... Yes. What would happen if we institute a policy that says, if a company takes more than 30 days from date of invoice to pay, we don't approve those details anymore. Well, there's, there's work that needs to be done on the power lines. There's Verizon poles that need to be replaced. It's, it's not, they're going to do it anyways. Well, they, well, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. And then we create a risk, risk to the public. Well, and, but, but, but that's on their shoulders. Yeah. I think other towns have tried it, and it hasn't worked. But, but they could go to another town to get detail, or anywhere to get detail. We've had this discussion before. They have to go through me. Yeah, but if you say you're, you have nobody that's available that day, what do they do? They go look and we have to else. schedule for another day. They schedule another day? They mm -hmm. don't go look at another town? They can't. Oh, they can't? No. How about we use the 30-day concept in the pay period? Instead of it kicking in the next pay period, it's 30 days. And then if they haven't gotten paid, the town covers it and collects the check later. It, I mean, you'd, you'd, still need, you'd still need money there to, no, I to do it. You'd still but, need to sit there. If the seed money's there, then we're going to pay them in the, the next pay period. I'm not going to wait 30 days. I mean, the money's coming back. No, you don't understand. I'm trying to give you a compromise. To, uh, to, 
Yeah, you're saying to wait 30 days. I'm and, saying and if, if in 30 days it hasn't happened, the town's revolving fund pays the yeah. officer. Why, why wait 30 days if we're going to have a revolving because fund? Because I don't think these guys are going to give you what you want. So yeah. I'm, they're a consultant check. They're, it, they're, they're nothing, it's no different it's, than drinking it, it is different because it's work that needs to be done on, on our roads and in our town for our residents but, and for but, our... But when consultants get hired, it's work that has to be done on something. It's, it's really no different. Well, of, of course, but they're, they're working as a Waitley police officer for the town of Waitley. Not for the town of Waitley, for the vendor. Well, they are. I mean, they're wearing the town of Waitley patch. That, but they're getting paid by the town of Waitley. When the detail check comes in, it goes as part of their income. This for, Again, for taxes. It's, it's no different than a consultant. I mean, it's exactly the same. It's, it's, it, you got to trust me on this. It's exactly the same. I, I don't distrust you. Uh, I'm not saying I don't trust you. What's the liability for the town if there is no detail? Well, like you said, they wait another day or two. No, they just say we don't provide that. Ever. Ever. Public safety issues. Well, yeah, I don't what's, know that, that. what's that mean? I know it's, it's easy to say. But what's it mean? I mean, so... Are they not going to come here? They're still going to come. Yeah, and do it. They're going to put the cones out. So they're going to have some guy in the cones out and close down a lane. So now you have one lane of traffic. Let's say it's on 116. Yeah. For a rush hour. Yeah. 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 How do... We, it is. It right. is. But he's asking what's the liability. Yeah. Is it on our shoulders or... Is it, is, it, is it a financial liability or is it just a PR liability? I, I, don't, I don't know either. It's a fair question. I don't know. But... but I, um, I, I don't know all the details, but I know OSHA regulations are coming out that, that we're supposed to be complying with, and there's a lot of training for traffic um, traffic enforcement and how to set up traffic zones and requirements for traffic zones. So I think it's, I mean, it's if OSHA drives by and sees a, a company out there doing work on the road and they don't have a, a police detail there, it, they're not going to be able to do the work. Aren't those our laws, our stipulations that say if you're going to work in this town on the roads, then you have to have a uniform officer there. That's a state. That's a state requirement. It's a state. Or is it's a state is it? It's a state requirement that if you look at any project in the state. There has to be a, a police officer there. There, uh, there are some exceptions for flagging, right, but it is but, a state. Yeah. But it is a state requirement. Not all states do that. You go to Connecticut, and they can have the. The woman holding the, the, the flag up there, yeah, that is legal. It, so. Anybody holding, holding <laughs> yeah. that up, that is legal. There, there, is no, there is no nationwide or we call it federal requirement that, that every state have a police officer on every construction project on a, on a road. There's no federal requirement. It's a state one. And that's why state police is on all these projects and why state police is getting all this extra pay. So you'd have to ask the question, are we do we put the town, by the way our pay system is, do we put the town at a disadvantage for drawing in quality officers at that time, or is this like substitute teachers where they're gonna to go to another town because they pay quickly, and they're not gonna come. No, I can't make that because I'm working in Bergie. No, I can't make that, I'm working up in Deerfield. Because well, they know. Doing that? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. They'll, they'll pick and choose which town to go to because yeah. they know who's yeah. who's going to pay quicker or more. Yeah. That's why we've had a conversation about yeah. who we pay for details. Period. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. How, how many officers are we talking about here that go in detail? No. Well, get... All of them at some point. So what do you have? Nine, eight, well. and twelve. And you and John are not eligible for detail, or you no, are, we are as well. You are as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. The majority of the time, I mean, for me, they're, they're during the day, so sometimes okay. Don will take them, yeah. sometimes it's okay. a part-time officer. We put it out as a, as a list, and it's kind of a seniority thing, who, who, picks, the, who picks the details. I mean, it's, we could, we could what if things and look at liability issues, and I mean, it's from, from my perspective, a public safety perspective, I mean, talking to the vendors, you'd have to call them in to get specific information, but I've talked to plenty of them that, that are happy to have us there, they want to have us there, they'd rather have us there than, than say a flagman on, on specific specific jobs. But I, I look at it and if I, if I say, well, you guys aren't paying so we're not doing details, we're not gonna do details in town, I mean, that puts the public at risk in my perspective. Where are you proposing that, that, that we get to see money of the 20,000? Where's that coming from? I don't know where it would come from. I know we've in the last seven years we've we've turned in twenty three thousand dollars in 
in administrative fees. I and don't that know. Just goes to that just goes to the general fund. And the town hasn't done anything to earn that $23,000. Jim's done it all. Yeah, the, the town doesn't oh, chase down. Jim's a town, Jim's a town, Jim 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 the town has, but I don't get, I don't get the administrative fee. paid though. Jim to do his job. Yeah, but I don't get paid, I don't get paid the administrative fee. I don't get the administrative fee. That, that well, fee know, just goes to the you're, town you're without, doing your job. yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying I don't, right. I'm not saying I'm not gonna, I'm not saying I'm putting it on somebody else. I'm just saying that, looking at where to, where to get money from, that's. I, I can't get beyond a, the fact that they're consultants. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Jonathan, but I, I think also listening to what the, Jim is saying, there, there's, there's a benefit to the town, to the people here, to have that detail on... on, on uh, yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not saying, that, I'm, I, I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm just saying that as a consultant, you need to be comfortable with the fact that it, you may not get paid within your normal pay cycle. You're still going to get paid, but you may not get paid within your pay cycle. Yeah, but if you're the consultant and you have the opportunity to work with three organizations and two organizations pay you within 30 days or 20 days or when you walk out the door, but that third organization waits 60 days. Mm -hmm. and, you have, and you have your option every time. I don't think you're going to go to that third one. Eventually, that Eventually, well, because you'll milk out these other two. <laughs> because I like money. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, but that's sort of my, I mean, it's, if I that's want. That's for profit. This is. No, that's salary. That's salary. It's still, it's still profit. Okay. I, and there, there's, some, there's some times as well, I mean, where we get those details where they know it's going to take a long time to pay. We can't find a weekly officer to do it, but a Deerfield officer will do it, or a Hatfield officer will do it, because they're going to get paid next week. So it doesn't matter to them what detail they're doing, but if you want to wait six months to get paid or do you want to I just I don't know I think it's fair I don't I don't look at it as a consultant I mean from my perspective if somebody wanted to hire me as a trainer to come and train their department or some something outside of my normal activities then I look at that as okay I have an, an area of expertise a police officer they're just they're doing their job they're directing traffic like they would do on a crash site like they would do any other time they're providing medical care if somebody gets hurt at a Everyone site has an expertise it's just what the expertise yeah, but this isn't an expertise. This is just their this is just their everyday job. It's just it's another shift for them. So, you know, working a shift versus working a detail. It's not like you're doing something specialized by doing a detail. You're you're doing your job. You're doing a something that's part of your regular everyday activities. You don't need a a special skill to do that. And so okay. I look at a consultant as somebody that I would hire you as a consultant because you have some special skill. If if you don't have that special skill, I'm going to go hire a better consultant. Is there an expectation that these details might increase over the coming years as new industries come into town, such as a dispensary or castaways? The, the, the only thing that I know of is, is castaways for right now. And, and the, the, the flat lane, based on our agreement right now, we're looking at about $9,600 worth of details um, that over the next, once they open for, for four months, that's what they're going to have to pay for. Over that four-month period. For police officers, yeah. So, and they, and they may pay once a week. They may pay... One time, I, I don't know when they're going to pay. How about we try it for a year? If the town comes up short, we, we forget it. Well, Mr. Finance Chair, where would you think the money would come from? General fund. I think the money can be found. It's not budgeted for right now. It's not budgeted for, but we're going to fall. You know, we got meetings coming up, and you know, we could. Uh, I mean, it's not. I mean. There are monies that are going to be replanted. It's not as if it's simply a cost and there's nothing coming in back of it. So it's it's sort of a revolving door. Do we set our own finance? I mean, um, our own um, administrative fees, or is that what's passed by law? Is that set? You can't go more than ten percent. What are we at right now? Is that ten percent? Yeah. You can't go more than ten percent by Mass General Law. Correct. Ten point one. <laughs> so if we raise our detail to $80 an hour, yeah, you can get more. <laughs> That's the kind of thinking I like. Well, I mean, I was, I was doing the quick math, and so if it's been since 2000, $1,500 has not been collected. That's about $80 a year. That's that, which, that, may, which you may not even see anywhere else. So, so that would be the cost to the town, is that it would cost us around $80 a year based on those. 
Okay. Jim, how did you come up with the 20,000 seed money? That dollar amount, how did you come up with that? Uh, well, current looking at what we currently have, twelve to $13,000 worth of details, knowing that there's gonna be more details coming up once we start the, the cash release thing. So any at any given point in time, there could be anywhere between ten dollars and $20,000 outstanding. And that's if we don't have like a major project. If we, I mean, if they come in and, and do redo five and 10, when we did five and 10 the first time, we had seven detail officers a day for like four months straight every day, five days a week. So that's, that's something that's gonna be, you know, you're gonna have $100,000 in that situation. But those checks are coming in on a regular basis, it's a contracted deal. So, um, so anywhere between 10 and $20,000, so erring on the side of caution the $20,000 just to, to not go over it um, at this point. <clears throat> Okay, now at this point after we come, Brian is at a vote at a special town meeting yeah. to set up this account for? Special town meeting, maybe the vote needs to take place in the town meeting. The town meeting. It's a special meeting. And this should probably be discussed by you guys. Yeah, I think it would be. Yeah, all financial articles are okay. discussed by the finance do you, committee. Do you want me to forward the current proposal that we have or do you want to get it from? Okay, I don't have the list. Does Brian have a list of the towns that have a revolving account yeah. right now? Because I don't have that. It's on the second page. page. It's on the front page. Right there. Oh, these are, okay, these, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Is so do we need to take any, any action now? Or? Brian, what are you looking for? Well, in order to move this forward, it would have to be placed on a special uh, town, on a town, town meeting, meeting right. or, or town meeting warrant. Um, right now, we don't have one scheduled. Um, and as far as I know, this would be the only thing on it. Okay. Um, so. Well, don't we need a special time meeting when free cash is certified? No? Unless so you want to spend it on something. Yeah. Uh, there's a cow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, what'd you have at your last session? We like three people, so. Yeah. Three articles, yeah. They, they were recruited. People. <laughs> they were recruited. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so maybe you, you want some. Some time meetings. Direction from this board as to whether this is uh, to proceed with this for the next meeting, special town meeting. Would yep. that help? Uh, otherwise, we're we're not taking any action, and, and Jim is sitting waiting to, to it, it, know. It will remain the status quo until the select board takes action to change it, and it can take action to change it by putting it out a warrant. What's the difference between a revolving account and re-implementing revolving account? Oh, they're re-implementing it. it. Yeah, they had it. They had it. It was some way. accounting issue, so it oh, stopped for a while. Now they're, I think May. They're talking about May. They're looking at re-implementing it. So the, there are other towns that do this. You just didn't look into the other. Towns? I I gave the list of the towns that our officers frequently go to the, the majority of the time. I mean, Greenfield. Northampton. I mean, they do it. Any of the, the bigger towns, Montague. They, they all have those. Those same accounts some of the other towns that, that some of the other hill towns um, they do it as well i just i included the ones i'd say we're in the minority of, of towns especially around us um, there's not many that aren't doing it okay I, I think we should move ahead with this yeah you, you agree okay so we'll move ahead for a so are you going to wait to make a warrant and deal with time? Finance finance committee? Or, uh, well, is, is, is there a need to do it immediately or can we wait till? We can't do it immediately. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. Well, you'd have to. At the, the earliest. The earliest or, or would we get free cash certified in what, October, November? Right. So I mean, that's. It, it'll, it'll depend, but it would probably be at the late fall, early. Winter special town meeting. Okay, could be soon. Okay, could you, you never know yeah. what else is going to pop up in yeah. the meantime. Right. Um, well, right. Right now, we'll have to wait till that certain cash, emergency cash is certified. certified so. yeah. yeah. Okay. So right. So we need to wait for that to, to know ballpark when that's going to be before we schedule anything because we don't want to miss that. Yeah. We don't want to guess wrong. Right, we cannot appropriate free cash until we right. until DOS tells right. us. Right, so we don't want to be sitting in a special time. And you know, it turns out that right. free cash hasn't been certified yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I like I like CP. 
<laughs> kind of looks even yeah, exactly. fun balance. Okay, so we can tell Jim to proceed with, the, with developing something for a, a future warrant article. And go to finance. And go to finance, okay. okay. All right, okay. thanks you guys. Okay, next item. Uh, all business to discuss the ward contract for historic safe restoration project. So we've been asked um, by the historic commission to uh, move this to the September 4th meeting because we still want to hear back from some references. Okay. okay. Um, from the person who submitted the lowest bid. Okay. Next item is uh, discuss an award contract for Hurley Field Softball Field Project. Yep. So we received three bids for the project. Um, the lowest bid was uh, Morse Engineering and Construction at uh, $24,117. Uh, the next two bids were $78,000 and $79,000 um, from uh, Morosky and uh, AJ, I think it's pronounced Virgilio or Virgilio out of Westfield. I'm not sure what the, um, how to pronounce that. But um, so what we have before us is whether we want to, well, we should have a discussion about whether we want to award the contract um, to Morse Engineering. Um, I, Keith, and Jonathan and I have talked about this. We requested more information from the company in terms of um, their why size. This, why is it so low? Size. Oh, I didn't, we didn't. Trust me, that question yeah, came yeah, we didn't come out. Didn't ask. This too good to be true. We didn't come out and the ask them. Why the other ones are, ones are so high? Mm -hmm. We asked yeah, them about their experience. Too high and yeah. wasn't yeah. that. Uh, who's but, right? They got to do the job. So what, Brian, what did you find out with the, I guess you were checking references, yep. so I got one point. Um, so Sarah Campbell was one of the references. She's currently working with the town up on the uh, sidewalk design project in, in the center of town. Yeah. Um, she spoke very highly of them. They did some work for the town of Sunderland. Um, and they also called um, the operations manager for the town of Sturbridge. They had also done work for the town of Sturbridge and he spoke very highly of them. Um, it's, uh, it's a small company. Um, there's two managing partners. One is um, still working at Stantec. Um, he's a uh, professional engineer. The other one has around 20 years of construction experience. I think it was 20 years of construction experience. And then they also work with their father, who was retired um, from the town of Sturbridge. And he's the DPW director for the town of Sturbridge for 23 years. And one of the realities is when the owners are doing the work themselves, which will be here, they do not have to pay prevailing wage. So that's correct. That's there's, there's an owner operator exemption for prevailing wage. Right. Okay, but is the, the third employee still considered an owner? I don't believe he's an owner of the company, no. So he does uh, he I, need to be, will he be paid prevailing wage then? He, if he does work on the project, he, he has to be paid right. prevailing wage. So, so you're only looking at well, there's two people. But one, I don't. One is only uh, a minute. Well, I, I guess he's a professional engineer, but he's not a construction type person. Right. So you're only looking at one person doing the work, basically. That's probably all it's going to be anyway. Well. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, they're they're hired to yeah. do the job. They're hired, okay. So. And, and the, the time period they said was, well, it says here they'd start into next week and it would be done by September 15th, provided uh, no issues with other stakeholders managed by the town. Okay, who else is involved or will be involved during this period? During their period? Just yeah. keep, keep myself and Brian. Right, and there may be some coordination with our engineer. Right, and, uh, but that's not within the town. Well, who, who's, who's overseeing all this operation? Keith. Keith's okay. the GC on this. Okay, and, so, and who's uh, staking it out or laying out the, the plan, the project? We, we will go, be going back to SVE to, to 
just stay with them. And they're on board to do it yeah. next week? Uh, I haven't got, they haven't gotten back to me, but I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. But. Okay. So I, I did get in touch with them this afternoon about um, sort of a pre-construction meeting. And they, they can't do Friday, but they said they could do Monday. They're finishing up a job with the town of Sturbridge right now. Okay. Sidewalk so job with the Sturbridge right now, so. This is SVE? No, this is this is Morse. Oh, Morse, okay. So they could do a pre-construction meeting early next but again, week. But again, the first step is to clear out, and then SVE would come in and do the staking, and then they'd put that. But do they know what, what to clear out yeah. to begin with? That's, that's in the original bid documents. That's in the original bid documents in terms of the, the, the grade that we're looking for. Right, but, it, but is it identified in the field? Yes. At the site, okay. But oh, at the site? At the site. Not they yet. They know where, where to excavate, I guess. Oh, yes. They know where to excavate. Okay. But again, it's on the plans, and, and they'll, they, you know. I guess why, you know, we, we asked for four items, the well, three items, and, and they only put everything under labor. And the other ones, I, I think, when Brian showed me at one time was the materials and others. Are we going to be charged some materials later on? What's the materials? You know, there's there's a lot of variability with how contractors put together, show their bids. Right. Um, quite honestly, I, I don't know what the other material costs were. The, the, the material costs that were in the original thing was the, the infield mix that has to be brought in. They're not responsible for that. Okay. They're not responsible for that. Who's, who's providing that? That's coming out of New Hampshire. Okay. So the law requires, so so for projects, um, projects of this size, the law requires us to take the the, the person providing the lowest price, who right. we find to be responsible, um, and based on, on the references, and then we'll we'll get a better feeling a little bit at the pre-construction meeting. But I don't know that we would have grounds to. Project their price. Nor do we want rounds. Well, no, but I, I, I guess I've looked, I've been involved in looking at bids and construction projects for quite a few years, and I guess when one bid comes in lower than this, it's it, usually they they want to they're going to make it up somewhere or another because they know what what others have bid on a project. Uh, I guess you take a chance on that that, that there's not going to be any. Any overruns or or, or or extras on here, and and the, the other the other thing I, I guess concerns me me some and, and yeah it is it is a little bit and I, and I know we're on a time crunch is the the I, I, maybe a minor minor point to some people but but the the, the resume to me. Uh, the type of work they've done related to this is only what one or two times that they've involved in excavation. Hands on. They supervise, they manage, they design. Uh, can they actually do it? I don't know. And, and the other thing that, that all the, 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 the references, the, not the references, the, the jobs they put on here, there's no time period. They listed a dozen jobs. They've done when? Since what, 2004? All these jobs? There's no time period. I, I guess, <coughs> to me, that's raises the question, why can't you tell people when you did these jobs and how long the project was it? I mean, that's, that's a negative to me on their proposal. It sounds uh, like there's some red flags there, Fred. Yeah. But uh, you hold you you have the control, right? I, I, you I you don't have to pay. No, you're you're going to get a scope of work. Right. You're going to you're going to get a timeline, and you're going to be checking. And if it, if they don't meet those points, then we can check. Yeah. I mean, okay. They know that, and then and and our and and our buildings and grounds person is completely comfortable with okay. the proposal. That's why we hired a buildings and grounds person. So it's key? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. So then, if it if it goes to hell in the handbasket, you can say Keith did it. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I don't know. Can, I was that? looked at the other 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 proposals, how detailed they were, and the work they've done, or whatever. But uh, I think this one is awful vague in describing what he did in their their role. But Has this has this been been uh, presented to the uh, recreation rec committee? The bid itself? Yeah. No. Okay. No, but the, the rec committee does not have contract authorization. Okay. This board has contract this authorization. Board, okay. So I would move that we accept this bid. Um, pending Brian and Keith comfort after the pre-construction meeting that they will put together. What, what do you mean by, did you explain a little about comfort? Uh, what, what do you well, if, 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 if they sit down comfort? and then at the end of the meeting, Keith says, these guys have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. Then we don't have to. That would that would be Keith saying that. Don't do this. That's why I'm saying pending that. Otherwise, that's my motion. That's my motion. Okay. So and, and when did you say that was going to happen? Is there a date set um, for that? I asked for this Friday. They said that they could do Monday, but I still need to check with Keith. I know he's got some, some plans this week, but hopefully, if they come out here, we'll give me some time. Okay, have you met these people, either one of these? I met him so briefly when he dropped off the, uh, okay. he dropped off the okay. <laughs> price quotes. And so what is, what is your reaction to this, Brian? Um, I'm not overly concerned about the other, uh, the other higher bids. Um, I think a lot of times when we get few price quotes in, um, I don't think we get a representative sample of, of of what it would take to do the project. I think there are some contractors who put in high bids. Um, they put in high bids. There's a short time frame, so I think some contractors think if they can get a lot of money for a simple project, then they'll do it and they'll squeeze it into their schedules because they get to make a lot of money quick. Um, you know, I think that. Could be what's going on here because it's such a condensed time frame to get the work done. Um, but um, I, I'd be happy to for Keith and I to sit down with these guys at a pre-construction meeting and um, Keith and I talking and then signing the contract afterwards if we're comfortable. I'm gonna I'm gonna profess ignorance on this and I assume that the work is harder than I think it is, but. At the end of the day, we're, we're stripping off dirt, we're putting it back at a certain grade. I don't know how to do that. I don't know what, I don't know they're sifting the, equipment. Sift in the grass out. So and then they're, they're putting it back. Um, it's not, I don't know that it's terribly complicated, but again, I've never tried it. So they're not actually planting the grass back, are they? Are they planting grass? No, we're going to hydro seed at the end. That's, that's on way they do. They're not, they are just. They're just excavating out, and they're putting, and they're getting the all the. It's not even called grass. What's on that thing right now? It's a bunch of weeds. Yeah. They well, sift that out, and then they put back at grade. And the only grass is in the outfield. What's that? Isn't the only grass in the outfield on the soil? Yeah, they're going to leave. Diamond. They're going to leave it. probably four to five inches subgrade for the infield mix to be placed. On, so it's just, and that'll be all staked out, obviously. Sure. Sure. So, okay, so and then Keith, and then Keith will high proceed. Yeah. Oh, so Keith is going to do this high proceeding. Yeah. He has equipment to do that then. He just hired him. Okay. Hired him. okay. okay. Yeah. So if you wanted to, if we wanted to go down this route, if you wanted to authorize me to sign the contract after the pre-construction meeting now. That would be the... That would be part of my motion. The most feasible way to get this done right. on the time frame that we right. set forth. 
Okay, and, and any changes to this contract you would be authorized to sign as well? Um, mm, is, there any, is, this gonna, is this a fixed? Well, it's, it's a but total change order. Uh, change order. There are always a possibility. Um, and we would want to be able to do quickly. Um, but that wouldn't be germane to the... It might be best if you would authorize maybe Jonathan to approve them. Because, for instance, for the town hall, we allowed, yeah. we allowed Fred to do change yeah, orders right. up to a certain amount. Right, right. But again, a change order is not going to be germane to a pre-bid, pre-construction meeting. But those would be happening no. down the road. Right. 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 Okay, as long as you're, you're comfortable with this and it, comfortable with the uh, pre-construction meeting uh, next week, whenever it's scheduled, uh, I guess I'll, I'll support your your motion to have Brian uh, sign the, the contract with him. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. And I think it would be worthwhile to take a vote to, to authorize Jonathan to execute any change orders. Make a motion. Sweet. Okay, second to authorize Jonathan to make, to approve any change orders. Okay. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Let's take some land. Taking order taking for Poplar Hill Road extension. Okay. So this is the order of taking a public way easement for uh, Poplar Hill Road. This is that's the last step in the process that we started. I don't know how many years ago it was. Well, before I got here, um, both so we're taking so um, this extends Poplar Hill Road about a thousand feet or so. Um, that was a price street delay. Mm -hmm. um, the two property owners are Peter Creasy and Smith College, and this extends the uh, road up to the gate um, at the end of the road that Smith College currently owns. Mm -hmm. um, this is a friendly taking to be recorded and then it'll be the last step and then the town will, will only maintain this portion of the road. Okay. So once it's recorded, the, the, the plan in the book will be filled in? Yep. Okay. This was approved at the end of town meeting. The road was laid out by the select board last fall and also approved by the planning board last fall. Okay, next item. Uh, so, so for, there's a second part to that. Let's okay. get tacked it on the end there. Okay, with the. So, also in your packet, there's a letter that I drafted. The second part of this conversation um, with Mr. Creasy in Smith College is that um, there's been a discussion about whether Smith College would be willing to donate. Um, $60,000 to make improvements to Poplar Hill Road from the point where it, where the pavement ends up to um, the field station, the McLeish field station. Um, and we, it was recommended to us by um, the Smith employee that we've been talking with, was uh, Charlie Conan, that we submit a letter um, requesting that Smith make that donation. Um, so there's a letter in your packet. The letter would be from the select board. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it or not. Um, so we'd be, we'd be requesting $60,000. That's an estimate from Keith as to what it would be for the material costs um, to make some drainage improvements and to pave the remaining portion of the road, widen it a little bit, and then pave it. Um, the town would uh, provide in kind, uh, the in kind waiver for that to happen. Will this be done this year yet? There's a possibility it could be done this fall. Um, I think it depends on two things, how fast we could get the money in, if they're willing to donate it, and then the availability of a, um, I want to say Keith was talking with Warner Brothers, but I don't recall. So um, are we, the paving. so if we sign this, so we need to get some response back from them or some agreement from them? 
Or is this the agreement? This is a proposal from us for okay. Smith. It is, it's formalizing the discussions, the, the requests that have been made. Okay. That's great. So you have something we need to sign on there? Yep. Okay. And a lot of this has, has stemmed from neighbor um, complaints about the dust that's generated. When the when the improvements were made in, up there to build the, the Bechtel environment, the classroom, according to the neighbors, the traffic increased a lot on Poplar Hill Road. And in the dry summer months, um, more traffic means more dust. So. There's quite a bit of traffic. There's yeah. some concerns. Considerable yeah. numbers for the college vans past my house. Yeah. Every day. It's really become. Great. An outdoor it's just, it's recreation center, well, really. Oh, 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 it's great. It's, just, it's, it's, it's nice house. to see you. But in my house, traffic. <laughs> okay. Yes. Moving on, next item is um, <laughs> discuss next steps on with the reuse of the center school. Review committee charge uh, that Jonathan put together as we asked for last meeting and a combined list of desired skills for committee members that haven't been selected yet. Okay, Brian, did you want to? Sure, you have the draft charge in your, in your packet. I'll, I'll read it quickly. Um, it says to identify, investigate, and assess the possible reuse opportunities for the center school building and parcel and to submit a written report of its findings to the Whitley Select Board on the committee's preferred reuse scenarios within two months. The committee is asked to consider both public and private options for reuse of the center school building and parcel taking into account such factors as the existing condition of the building, available infrastructure, renovation demolition costs, its historical significance, location, public needs, market demand, public input, and how other communities have successfully reused former public school buildings of a similar size. There's only one record that I did my own. Okay. Okay. The one, so um, the one comment that I heard back from Joyce, who can't be here tonight, is that she was wondering if we could soft, soften the language of taking into account. Why? Because um, she thinks, well, I'll guess what she's thinking here. Um, I think something along the lines of considering such factors might be better. Well, you say consider no private options take into account. Okay. But I, I guess I'm, is that, is, that's semantics, isn't it? My opinion? I think a little bit, yeah. Let me, let me read it here. Uh, unless she, she she wants that language to make uh, more, uh, what do I want to call it? sentimental, consider sentimental value, people or personal attachment or whatever you want to call it. So the, 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 the language we have here is what she recommended? Because it already says consider. Taking and that's consider both public and private options. It says. So this is the email that I had. Could we soften the taking into account part? I know we won't have a technical assistance grant to use to investigate further, but neither will they have the expertise to price out renovation, demolition, or assess market demand. I think if Keith is on the committee, they will have a good resource to understand the existing conditions and available infrastructure. When historical commission members on, they have some idea of historical significance. The other things mentioned are a bit easier to respond to. I, you know what? I don't care. It's semantics to me. Taking into account and, and to consider. The only reason I don't like consider is to use and consider twice in the same paragraph. And my ninth grade grammar class would tell me that, that is a no-no. Absolutely. This is the very old. No. Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah. But other than that, I, I, you know. Did anybody call no? Nope. No. Is 
there a second page? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm I'm fine with that, Fred. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's fine if you want to change it. The only comment was uh, I don't know how this committee will look at market demand. I mean, well, because you need to have someone on the committee that understands market demand and understands what what people have done in other places and, and what the market tolerates bears and, and where where other towns perhaps are falling short. What have people looked for that they've not been able to find up to this point because of a lack of X, Y, or Z? And, and there may be no market demand for, for you know, whatever, but, you know, I'll use an example of mixed use office space. And again, I'm just using that as an as example. Maybe there's no market demand for mixed use office space in a small rural town, but maybe there is. And that's why someone with an understanding of, of um, real estate management who knows what people are looking for and what they're not looking for. I, again, I've mentioned before that someone from mass development would be a great person to be on this, and they have a Western Massachusetts office because they have their ears to the ground like nobody else does in terms of what people are looking for and what people are not looking for. You know, no one's probably looking for office space on biomedical research around Whaley, Massachusetts, but they may be looking for, I don't know what. And, and, and so that's the understanding of market gaming. Is it a perfect science? It's certainly not, but it's better than what we get. But you'd have to get somebody on board that can do that. That's true. I think I can do that, actually. That's their job. Okay. On a daily basis, or a weekly basis, ongoing basis. So. Okay, I guess it's fine if you want to make that change that Joy said. I have no problem with that. Okay. Uh, so, so the next steps here, um, I think what we talked about in the past was that we we're going to uh, post something on the website that saw interested volunteers, correct? Yes. It says this is a charge of the committee to right. do this. Who wants to, right, to put take it part? Out, yeah. Please right. contact Amy. Right. Um, and then we also talked about putting an article in this group about Sometimes looking for volunteers for the for this committee. Committee, yes. And then this, I, I guess this committee would have input into the RFP that goes out. Yes. So they would have to meet, I guess, well, be organized and meet before the RFP goes out. Which is we were looking at what September, October time period, I guess. Yeah, because we're asking for a report back from them within two months. So you would, in theory, you uh, the earliest you would appoint the committee would be the second meeting in September. Right. Because this group, this group article would be going out. So you play it, okay, the end of September, then they went in two months, so you got, like I said, it's October 1st, and then we're December 1st, you want some report from them, and then we'd uh, <coughs> issue their RFP, hopefully, by then, or sooner, I guess, if they did it within, sooner than the two months. Okay, so, So the committee, do we wait till see what we get from the wow. from the announcement on our website and the scoop? Yeah. When's the scoop go out? The deadline's the fourth, September fourth. So shortly thereafter. Uh, we can also reach out to the COD to see if they know anybody with these skill sets. We can reach out to I'll reach out to Mass Development. Um, yeah. You know, we're not going to restrict it. This needs to be outreach, not played for. Right. I mean, so based on the the skills that we've identified on on this sheet, it, it, I think it would be good if we all had homework to try to figure out names of these people who might be interested in have conversations with them and see if they want to. 
be appointed to the committee on the 25th. This committee does not have to be with the residents either. No decision making authority, so. Yes. But why, why would. It's your committee. Why would you get somebody not from Whitley interested? Because skill sets that may not exist in town. So why would they be volunteering their time to help another town, I guess? Because that's what, know. That's what people do. I mean, well, I, we're not I, that I parochial, are we? Well, uh, well no, uh, we're not that parochial. I mean, and, maybe, and if we can't, right, if you're right and no one cares, then no one will care, but let's see. Okay. We well, choose to go to the moon in this decade. We have to okay. reach for the stars, okay. right? Okay. Uh, I guess looking at the skills, you know, you and I agree on the first three, three sets, pretty much we're saying the same thing. What's this say? Town finance knowledge? Yeah. You know anybody? I'm not. Not in this room. No, not really. Yeah. Not. <laughs> there may be a couple people. Do we have any um, retired real estate people in town? Well, there is a real estate agent in town. We don't, I, I don't know if you want someone who's currently in the business. Okay. Because, Maybe not. Because they may be, you know. As long as they have a finger on the pulse still. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's going to be a couple. Um, I'm not aware of any. Uh, but but somebody in the business still. They they know. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like asking somebody in the business for a estimate. Yeah. That's why you may you get a leg out from out of town. Right. Who come after this? You may get cover people that are in real estate world. Uh, Feel they can, you know, get a leg up, make connections, yeah. network. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most of the real estate people I know are residential; they're not commercial. But I'm going to call right. Mass Development tomorrow or Friday, and Mass Development will know commercial real estate, real estate people. I know commercial real estate people in Boston, but that's not really germane to. So does Mass Development offer that service to towns of some way? They offer insights, they offer um, studies, they offer networks. I, what I, what I, happened to FURCOG when that gal came down and did some interviewing? I think made a presentation to you guys. I mean, the charrette that they did now? You're talking about the charrette that they did? Uh, At the elementary school? The, uh, I don't know. It economic for, development? It, it was for the middle of town and yeah. for um, center school and but economic development economic development yeah that was the shred at the center square yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 we could call her i mean that's why you know i can reach out to the cog easily yeah because again they're the skill set they want to help and they're free right so but there's no budget with this committee right so again you know are we going to get everything we asked for Maybe not, but if you get 75% of what we ask for, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Brian, you will, okay, so you will post something on our website. Yep. Yes, okay. Uh, new business, discuss and sign uh, Chapter 90 Project Reimbursements. Off. I said he wasn't sure if he was going to make it. So this is the first set. These are for Chip Seal, North Street, and Chestnut Plain Road. And then the other one. I signed in the wrong spot there, Fred, but it's okay. Yes, yep, you're right. So on the right side, okay. What's this? Just so the 
total bond request is just over 167,000. Everybody signing both of them? Yep. Any you checking them? Business uh, discuss signing the regional kennel agreement with Franklin County Sheriff's Office. So this is the annual agreement between the town and uh, the sheriff's office for the, for the for the town, the animal control officer, to use the uh, regional dog kennel. Uh, we talked with Rick. Amy heard back from Rick today, and he's wants to continue using it, and that's what he includes in his budget for it. So okay. this would just be signed, signed by Fred. Rick is our what? He's the animal control officer. Animal control officer. But who's we'll, we'll keeper of our pound? Me. Huh? Has nothing to do with dogs. Nothing, nothing, nothing to do with that, huh? If you find any livestock, you can bring it down there. How's the pound? You've been, you've been called on to keep those pounds lately? I don't I don't know if he's sworn in yet, so. No, well, it is. We're without a keeper of the pound currently. Oh, okay. I remember when I first started on the board and I put, I became the Go weight, in. weights and measures guy. I'm like, what does the person do? <laughs> and then a field driver. I was field like, driver, fence viewer. Yeah, field driver. What do you do? Go well, take all the stuff you want right now. Well. What's Wait, that? Page well. Oh, yeah. Waitley has the last keeper of the pound in the state. Oh, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Am I still keeping yeah. yeah. Or did I give up that August yeah. position? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hang it on with. What does it do? I just keep people from stealing the stones. Yes, yeah, so real quick. What stones? The pound. The pound is a Those are all the stones. Stone all those stones are old. Across the street from my house, that's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's there the are stones. I didn't know there were stones there. Oh, yeah, they just did have like 200 years. <laughs> but don't, don't look now. <laughs> Can't right. find them. There's too many Is it like there. Stonehenge? It's, it looks like a foundation. People keep trying to steal the stones, so I keep chasing them out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huge stone building. wall somewhere, you know? I knew that, of course. Right. Okay, moving on. Town administrator updates, ADA self evaluation plan, progress, public comments. Yep, so I want to keep this as, as an agenda item, um, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. So, as we move this process forward, we've scheduled the um, the evaluation of, of our facilities for uh, the 28th. Um, so that's something that myself, uh, Don Sluder, Jim Ross, Larry Ashman, and Keith, and he can make it. Um, there's a checklist that uh, Mass Office of Disability has sent to us, has recommended to us to go through the facilities. Um, fill out the checklist, and we'll um, and I'll write the um, self evaluation. Uh, self-valuation plan and uh, self-valuation and transition plan as required for submitting the municipal improvement uh, grant that the library wants to submit to pay for the lift. Um, there's a couple other components of the self-evaluation. One is that we need to evaluate um, departments and programs and that looks at things like communication um, and several other things and also website accessibility. So we're going to be sending how we do that is there was um, there's a survey that goes out to the department heads and the heads of the uh, 
boards and committees, and we ask them to fill out this, I, I won't say brief, because it's some pages long, but it's not onerous. Um, and we see how we're doing in terms of um, ADA compliance. Um, so that'll be going out as well. Hopefully that will go out tomorrow. Um, and the goal is to get this wrapped up and the grant application submitted for the library by um, October 1st. Um, okay. But I want to keep this on our agenda so that um, that there be that there the opportunity for public comment if people want to say something about a building or some of our programs. Um, so. That's where that is. The next step is that is that survey and then the self evaluation of our facilities on twenty eighth. So we'll keep this moving so we can get it approved and submitted. Okay. What else? Um, last Friday, uh, the castaway sale happened, so it is now in the control of the uh, new ownership. Um, so as far as I know, it's going to remain closed for, um, they said anywhere from now to 30 days so they can make renovations. Um, but they've been in contact with myself and they've been in contact with Jim because they need to coordinate the, the police details that we talked about for the first four months. So, um, we'll stay on top of that. In your packet is a couple things under uh, commentary updates I want to just touch on. Um, one is that the next round of community compact um, grants are becoming available. Um, I believe we would be eligible to apply for more. I need to double check. Um, the one outstanding that we still have is, is the water merger. We have fifteen thousand dollars to help with um, some technical assistance on, on making that happen. Um, so I'm going to check to see if we're eligible. I, I suspect we probably are. So we would want to consider these grant programs maybe at our next meeting to see which ones would make sense to apply for. And again, these are for, these are for funding to help implement best the best practices that are identified by the by the administration. There's an opportunity from the clean energy, UMass Clean Energy Extension. It's called Reducing Municipal Vehicle Fuel Consumption in Rural Massachusetts. And they're looking for rural communities who want to participate um, in this program, um, which is again meant to uh, reduce municipal, municipal vehicle fuel consumption. Um, it's essentially installing a, a, a GPS system and tracking where everybody goes, um, and then analyzing uh, the data to figure out how we could reduce our fuel consumption. Um, I think this is great, but I think we should have a conversation with department heads about this to make sure that people who are driving are on board and understand. Yeah. This isn't something that you just want to say, you're doing this. Right. Uh, it, it's interesting when you read about the things that the GPS can track. Right. Um, okay. You know, it's pretty much everything. Not that we want to be looking the other way. That being said, I would rather have them on board with, yeah, this sounds like a great idea, rather than it making us look like we don't trust people. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'll have a conversation with them. I'll be meeting with, I try to schedule meeting with the department heads for September 10th, so this is, unless we need to let them know before that, I can, this is one of the items we can talk about. Um, we have a nice letter from Elizabeth Warren in the packet saying thank you for contacting them. I don't, when did we contact them? I have no idea, um, okay. but thank you. Um, you see, seen on the uh, on the complaint that was filed with the building inspector about um, 102 Christian Lane, which is Yankee Candle Company, um, in terms of noise and lighting disturbances of a neighbor. 
um, but I'll follow up with Jim. We got this um, the last week, and I'm not no, sure. Exactly. I know he's just playing out with Yank for Yankee Candle. No? Uh, somebody is somebody bothered by Yankee Candle operations. Oh. Well, the the cover letter talks about a. Uh, Applying for a special permit for the facility. What's a special permit I, for? I do, I do not know. You know? Uh, they're putting on a, a storage building. I'm guessing that'd be the special permit. 3,000 square foot fragrance storage oh. building. Is that because they had a new company and they're going to make candles for it? It may have something to do with it's that. I don't know. Yeah, Where? There, is, there is a storage building being proposed. Where? I don't know that that requires special Where, permit. Though. Where is this building being proposed for? On their site. Yeah, but where on their site? You know, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. The old field. Maybe. I honestly don't know. They have a hearing with the conservation mm -hmm. folks. And they, they've done Costco, but they haven't applied for it. But they do support it. And, and the, the person that wrote the letter to, to the building inspector, I, I, I guess I. I can agree with, with some of their, a lot of their comments in here. Because I guess I experience the same thing, noise. I don't experience lighting, but my property, I see noise. I hear noise. Trucks, I open a window, see if I have air conditioning on, like in here, I don't hear anything. But if I sit outside, I hear trucks. 11 o'clock at night, midnight, I hear trucks coming and going. It's, it's not the highway. It's no, it's not the highway. Well, but, and, and again, that's no different than the trucks that we've talked about are going through the center of town and yeah, but down is, my road, is, down Christian Lane. Is, is there a... a uh, we have a noise ordinance for. I think we have any activity what after seven, after ten p.m. and and before seven a.m. There is a bylaw on noise. Yeah, I mean. So wh why doesn't that apply to them? Where we are in the process with this is that the building inspector receives a complaint and he'll 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 undertake an investigation as to whether the their special permit or the zoning applies zoning bylaws are violated um, and if they are and if they are then he'll issue he should be issuing a essentially a cease and desist letter for whatever the action that's violating the special permit with the zoning bylaw and we'll find out what that action is I uh, usually we usually see follow-up letters from him so there are no, there are no this industrial park falls under the same zoning bylaws as residential um, the, the bylaws there are different um, I'm not sure if they're commercial industrial I think they might or, or they're just straight commercial there are different requirements but I suspect that their their special permit has I more unique conditions attributed to the facility but I, I don't know I haven't seen it I certainly hope to remain cognizant of the fact that the candle is an incredibly important neighbor to us yeah, for a good better reason. I know, but I can hear it. You want to move? You got to move, right? Yeah. I mean, they're an incredibly important neighbor to us. I know, but but if there's there's restrictions on when they should be doing certain activities, and nobody cares, and nobody's following up or talking to them, they're, they're going to go ahead and do whatever they want. I mean, this letter, and I can agree between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. There is increased truck activity. Now we have a, a zoning bylaw that says you're not supposed to have noise between them hours. Well, well does that check. apply? Does that apply to them or not? That's what we'll be. We'll find out. We'll get a point we'll out for sure. Ninety-one doesn't bother you, but right, a couple trucks in and out. No. I, and ninety-one, you must hear it for because yeah. I hear it from my. I hear it. I hear it. But it's the, the especially the, the winter time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Even when the windows close, I hear it. You still hear it. The, the beat is backing up. Beep, beep, beep. I yeah. hear that for talk. An hey, hour. you know, talk to the people who live on Egypt Road about how yeah. much they enjoy the 4 a.m. Oh. road uh, train going past there. You know, we've talked about this forever, and yeah. everyone has examples of this. That was a great segue. So, okay. you maybe you've read in the paper, or you haven't read in the paper that. Amtrak's going to be starting a, a two-year pilot service yeah. called the Valley Flyer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to have two round trip, so that's going to be four additional trains running between, I believe it's Greenfield and Springfield, with stops in Holyoke and Northampton. But what that's going to be in addition 
to the existing freight traffic in the existing traffic from the, uh, is it called the Vermonter? The, which we get a train, I think it's one way, right? We get uh, we get a train that comes south and one that goes north. Right around five o'clock in And then there's gonna be additional trains that may be operating later at night, um, depending on how they shift trains for, uh, for the next day's operation. So there will be increased Amtrak traffic um, on that train and that trains those trains will not be going slow um, so just so everybody's aware that there's going to be increased train traffic and so if I would never go around a gate if I read because a train will not stop correctly the, the goal is to get people to New Haven it does stop in Springfield but the real goal is Greenfield to New Haven ultimately yeah so this seems to be flying because they got they got many times. Right. Well, because it's either they got to make it worthwhile for you to get on the train to begin right. with. Right. And what's New Haven? What's getting your car? And the way to New York City. You know, hey, and then from there, yeah, yeah, the city. Yeah. city. You can connect it with the. Yeah. But you always do a lot of the, uh, the farm crossings. Yes. There's a ton of those. Um. Yeah. So the, the article that I read, the train can go up to eight miles an hour through this stretch. Mm -hmm. Um. So <clears throat> that train is not stopping if it. It's a person or car anytime soon, so people need to be cognizant of I, that. I'm not one to, to promote different methods of communication, but someone should write something for the scoops and the choices in here, because she would be saying it if, yes. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, see, what, see, what, see what happens with that, but, but I've experienced the high-speed trains from, from Albany, New York, to, to in New York City, it's, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, and they only stop two or three times, and the whole route pre I pretty much is, is screened, uh, fenced in for animals and into crossings, it's all fenced in, so there's no access to anybody. Now here, I don't know, you're out in the open. <laughs> well, here in New York gonna, City, you're gonna you get, might as well get in a car. Yeah. Because you stop at every little pole dump going, yeah. you can yeah, get you know. it. Yeah. It, it's, it's like a courier and Ives tour. Yeah. It's, it's just. Well, what it's like Boston, if you take the train to Boston, I mean, from uh, well, even Newton, theory, if you start in Newton, you get out of Newton and you go. It takes 40 minutes. Yeah. The theory is you can do work, though. Uh, well, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's true. Okay. Anything else? Um, I think it's about it. Okay. The next meeting is September 4th. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's an off. That's that's, that's an the first off. Wednesday. First Wednesday. Of the month, yeah. So we have our calendars adjusted, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Motion I, I go by your calendar these days. So okay. Okay. second done. Okay. Done. Yeah. Thank you.